swinging it forward. Thompson's making the run. Carroll hangs on to it though. Still David Carroll. Could go all the way here. Oh, what a goal! A typical week is difficult sometimes to call it a typical week um, just because of the changing nature of football really and that's the thing in working in this industry you get thrown curveballs the whole time you can't plan six weeks ahead and say here's our marketing plan here's our messaging plan in four to six weeks time it's dependent on results it's dependent on news day by day um, you can have things lined up for a player is supposed to go and do a visit he gets injured in training the day before plans have to change. What I do is I look after primarily the social aspect of the media department, um, so all our social media feeds, the website etc, um, more focused on design and video content. But because there's only two of us in the department, um, we look at it from a broader scale, we both, do, we both sort of chip in here and there. Leading up to a home game we do the match day programme, so a year's worth of programmes behind me here. I started writing for the club in 2005, so uh, hundreds of editions later, uh, a 64-page programme, so um, all the content is produced in-house. Uh, we have contributors, volunteers that write for the programme, but myself and Tom collate it all, edit it, find the pictures, send it off to the designers. We get back the proofs and, and approve it and make any amends that we need to. So that takes up uh, probably two, two and a half days we would sort of wrap up um, with video content from that game inside match day. It's my job to edit um, Dan Brown, one of our cameraman's footage. Um, we also goal cam, etc. Different bits of content from the weekend, quotes, pieces, etc. Making sure the website's all tidied up in um, the early part of the week. Then we start building towards another game, so we're trying to um, promote games to fans, putting out um, ticket stories, um, video content, trying to get them enticed, emotionally um, driven to come and come to the next game, continue to support the boys, because it's important, obviously, we've got we're in the middle of a relegation battle at the moment and we need the supporters all the way and we need to sort of convey that message that the supporters are important. I think the, the media team it, it can, uh, can be huge for you, they can make and break you in the outside world because we have a very closed shop in football, I think it's very privileged that people get to the training ground and get to access to the players and, and, and the managers and the staff and, and I think that the way they're portrayed on the outside can be um, can be crucial and, and, it, and it, can, it can rest on how the media team portray that. The way the two of them go above and beyond their job, description, extra hours, if the boys need something or want something, if the gaffer rings, rings them late at night and needs a video or something for the next day, it's been known to happen and, and the lads do it without a, a quibble, you know, it's just, it's there for us. Um, you know, assess his knowledge of the club, uh, he's the glue that holds the club together, he knows everything about the club. They help me out so much with my working week, um, give me the latest news, the breaking news, uh, and also allow access to interview uh, manager Gareth Ainsworth and all the players here, which is great. Um, and we've got a really fantastic relationship between the paper and the club now, which maybe in years gone by hasn't been the case. So it's Thursday morning uh, before a big game, we've got Sunderland at home on Saturday uh, and a Thursday morning always means the same, it's our press session up at the training ground. Um, so we have three regular attendees basically, uh, the Buck Street Press, the local newspaper and two radio stations, BBC Three Counties and Wickham Sound and it's their opportunity really to ask questions to the manager and a player or two uh, about the game coming up, the game last week and any other topics around the club. So particularly the hot topic this week is Matt Bloomfield and his 500th appearance for the club which is coming up this Saturday. So um, Blooms has done various bits of national media, the Football League paper, uh, he's speaking to the EFL later on for their podcast. 
and it's our sort of job to just to uh, facilitate all of those, to set them up, to arrange the timings, just to brief the journalists as well about any information that they might not know that just makes it more of an interesting story. So it's, like, as I say, part of the weekly session really, uh, before training, the press are invited in, we give them a cup of tea and you know, a nice little catch up on, on everything that's going on around the club and they sit down with the manager, a couple of players. Um, and they will be broadcast across those various platforms over the next couple of days for fans to read and enjoy. So uh, we're just about to pull up to the training ground now and uh, we'll see how we get on. Yeah, um, do, you, do you know what? I, I love that part of it. As a, when I was a younger player, all you are is a footballer. But as you as you get older, you have responsibilities. I'm club captain, and I'm I'm extremely proud and lucky to be club captain. Um, I take my responsibility responsibilities extremely seriously. <laughs> If anyone should have a Netflix documentary, it's a longest serving player at a football club. A longest serving player at one football club. Didn't he go away? He went away and came back. There might be more appearances, but like, because I've had the injuries and stuff, maybe, but actual time. That's exactly what he said. That's what he said. That's what he said. I'd watch it. Quarter past the day. Um, I'm just about to, I'm just on my way down to cancel the meeting because Gavin doesn't want to do it with me and people like yeah. that. So we're not going to have that meeting. We're just going to be the gym. It's not my, if I can make a decision, I would just make it. But it's not. It's not my place because it's a money thing. I can't say yes, yes. No, 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 that's fair enough. Either Ken or Gavin needs to make the call. Alright. Alright, do you have a call fast? Yo! I'll ask, go and ask him. This is my morning, like, <laughs> try and get somewhere and it takes 20 minutes to walk 10 yards. How are you doing? Oh, we're not How are we? Very well, are you? you? Very well, I'm good. I'm very well. I'm very good. well. Let's do this. Sorry, I'm slightly delayed. That's alright. We, no we did leave the gym about 15 minutes ago, but 100 <laughs> questions to answer on the way out. Right, morning boom, so big milestone ahead, potentially a 500 game for Wickham at the weekend, I'll be a 500 career game at Peterborough, we'll look back at that Peterborough game first, you got a goal on your 500 career appearance, obviously a bittersweet moment for you. Yeah, it was bittersweet because um, first and foremost I wanted to win the game and get the points on the board. And I enjoy seeing the other side of the game, whether it's a slight business insight you get or the management insight or coaching insight. Life is very busy at the minute with two little girls, I'm doing my coaching badge and doing coaching at Ipswich as well alongside, so life is busy but... Um, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love my life. I love my my job. I'm extremely lucky to do what I do, and um, I'd never ne never grumble about it. It's just uh, it's just good fun. It's just what keeps me alive. Great guy to have around. One of the generals um, and runs the dressing room for me as well, really well. So he's uh, he's somebody as a manager you'd want. Uh, he'll be in the trenches next year, and uh, but also he'd he'd be in the classroom next year as well. Um, you're saying all the right things and, and explaining why we do certain things and, and why it's important to uh, to stick together. So, no, Matt's a great guy and uh, one of my first uh, roommates here, but brilliant to manage as well. He's a club captain and uh, for very good reasons. Sunderland um, was a big test for Wickham as a football club, both on and off the pitch. Um, we are expecting a massive away crowd that we hadn't seen since the likes of Aston Villa came here in 2015, 2016 season. You know, I remember the uh, the build up was uh, was uh, you know a real hyped up thing and and poised to uh, to, to a great game on the Saturday. We were sort of busy um, looking forward to having the Netflix film crew with us as well that are filming the documentary for Sunderland, working through some logistical things with them just to make sure they got what they needed. The grandeur of the game for us meant that it was an enjoyable challenge. We didn't mind the late nights and the you know the extra demand that was on us because we knew it was going to culminate in a sold out Adams Park and a, an exciting match day. And that created a, a lot more um, pressure and and, uh, and reasons to get things right on the pitch. You know, we uh, we wanted to make sure we had a good account of ourselves because there's that many people coming down, but also put a good show on as a as a whole, as a club as a whole. And uh, and I think the both teams, the staff team and the players, both did themselves proud that day. 
we were aware of Matt Bloomfield's 500th game and when you've got a club legend like that reaching such an important milestone it's important to do it justice. I was doing press back at home in Suffolk because that's where I made one appearance for Ipswich so that was the start of the journey um, so I did a lot of press there and um, I did a lot of press around locally as well phone calls and messages from from many people which I was extremely lucky to get and, and really appreciated so I was really busy all week and I was worried that I was going to run out of juice by the weekend but adrenaline got me through the excitement of the day um, and if I needed any boost, I had that before the game when Tony Adams came and presented me with, he was the manager that signed me here, I've not seen him for probably 14 and a half years, something like that. And he made the effort to come to the game, um, and which Seth set up for me, um, which I was really appreciative. So if I needed any kind of little extra boost before the game, I got it there and I felt a million dollars going out onto the pitch. got in touch with Tony and it was a yes straight away, he'd been honoured to come back. It was the first time he'd ever come back to the club since leaving in 2004 um, and I think that shows the respect that he has for Matt as a player. It was made up just to see the manager that had signed him, you know, a, a big name in English football, come back and uh, you know, want to acknowledge his, his milestone and Blooms was uh, hugely chuffed and, and pumped up for the game and, and I think Tony loved the day and, and loved being back here. Sunderland were very, very complimentary about Wickham after what happened at the stadium like in November. One all draw, a late equaliser from then. They're still unbeaten at home this season. I think that's the closest they've come to losing in the league. So um, they were very, very complimentary about Wanderers. Uh, and yeah, leading up to that game, you know, you talks of a sellout, you know, partisan atmosphere, which was fantastic. And um, yeah, Sunderland packed out the away end and, and some, and Wickham packed out the home ends. It made for a great afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to a packed Adams Park League One action. Wickham Wanderers versus the Giants of the division. One side which has not lost since before Christmas or since certainly before the new year. And the other side which has not won since January the 26th. Which yes. one's which? You guess. Well, indeed. Huge, huge game here at Wickham Wanderers today for uh, Matt Bloomfield, who's uh, our, our captain today because... 500 games for one side, so it's 501 altogether for him. But that's an amazing, an amazing achievement. Tony Adams, the bloke who signed him, was here to, to for a presentation earlier, and uh, hats off to him. Wickham then are playing towards the visitors in the first half and kicking off. Uh, it's uh, Bolton and Samuel over the ball. Come on, you Blues! Time we had three points. The Bloom chases the ball down the left-hand channel. Go on, come on, come on, inside, get it in. Tyson wants it into the box and he's got it. In, good ball. Oh, great pass, great pass. He could get a cross in the head, he does. Open goal. Oh, 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 Do you know what, it took me back to when we can play at Tottenham in the FA Cup. And when you're playing a big team like that, you know you need to sort of start well, get your noses in front and above anything take your chances. And I remember against Tottenham, Paul Hayes had a header in about two minutes that he probably should have scored. I think the keeper got a touch to it, went over the bar. And you think, do you know what, that was our chance, that was our big moment to take the lead at Tottenham. And it had gone. And it was almost similar against Sunderland because we were the underdogs, because we weren't expected to, um, to take the game to them, you end up almost regretting it or thinking you're going to regret it when Luke missed that chance. I said to Luke, don't worry about it because he's, he's a young player with um, huge potential who we're lucky enough, you know, extremely lucky to have on loan from Man City. So one of my jobs has, has been an, as, as the old guy is to look after the young players. So Luke, I love him dearly. He's a great lad, lives with us in the house when we stay over there and, and he's a real good lad and I didn't want him to take that, take that to heart. Gapes one come very well through the middle. Is he in the bin? That's a good one. Well come on. Well done, come on. Oh, oh. Good ball to Paris Town Hall into the area. Yes, oh, yes, ball. yes. Square it. Oh. Left to Samuel. One now to Wickham Wanderers. Superb move. Yes. Missed a really good chance earlier, and now he gets knighted by Nathan Tyson. I've taken this club to my heart to see how far this club is coming. It's going 1 0 up, and not only just luckily going 1 0 up, it deserved to go 1 0 up. The, the boys' performance was fantastic. I think we're all thrilled. We, you know, we love Alex, we love working with him. He's a young lad who's been through his own troubles, and um, you know, he was potentially going to be the match winner here. 
it's great to see the Sunderland fans silenced, the Wickham fans really getting up for it and getting buoyant. And uh, yeah, you know, we were delighted to be in front. We knew there was a long way to go, but it was a great start. We knew that Sunderland won't be used to coming to places like Wickham and, and we'd take advantage of that and take advantage of, uh, of, of everything, the pitch, the players, the fans, the, uh, the whole atmosphere and, uh, and I think that uh, we thoroughly deserved that lead. Um, it, was, uh, it was all about then knowing that there would be some pressure coming and, uh, and trying to ride that pressure out. Down to the byline, chips it into the area, nodded down, danger from a shot. Oh, came off a Wickham shirt and has gone out for a corner. That was excellent play from Sunderland. Finds Cowan Hall, McCarthy linking up nicely into the area for Bloomfield. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Shot, oh, tipped over the bar. Bloomfield, oh! oh! What a goal that oh, oh, oh. would have been. Yeah, McLaughlin didn't read the script, did he? 500 appearances, um, it would have been a fantastic way to cap off a superb achievement for an ultimate professional. I like to make them little runs in the inside right channel and Jace found me with a little little dink over the top and I just thought head down, hit it, hit the target. Um, I got a good contact, I was happy with my contact. If it's half a yard higher or half a yard to the goalkeeper's right, then, then it goes in. But as it was, he just got his fingertips to it and, and tipped it over the bar. The whole ground had just erupted, you know, it would have gone mad in the press box, Gareth would have gone mad. And it would have been a fitting, uh, fitting way to celebrate his 500th game. You know what a servant he's been to the club. Great bloke to interview. You know he did a lot of press with him leading up to that game. Um, did a big feature with him, uh, which hit the back page of the newspapers. So yeah, it's a great week, and that really would have topped it off. But you know he had a fantastic game. What a way to mark his 500th appearance. There's one in the corner the JJ had that just escaped someone at the back stick, possibly Paris that he couldn't quite get to as well. So if that second goes in, then then we win the game. But a one 0 you're obviously. Only a goal away from, from just getting a point instead of all three. Here comes the corner, curling in, back end of the six-yard box. A head goes down, it's stopped on the line by Alsop. Oh, and then a boot went in late. McGeady gets it into the box. Stewart is there first, but only out as far as Ledbetter. There's the shot, parried and smothered by Alsop. No, it's gone in. He didn't contain the shot. And that is the equaliser from Watmore. Sunderland's budgets. Uh, huge compared in comparison and we've taken them to the 94th, 96th, whatever minute it was um, and we're competing in the same league and we've nearly beaten them and, and, and in that respect we have to take plenty of heart from it but to get so close to the win and what would have been a, a historic win for the club um, you know against such a huge massively well supported um, huge you know uh, history um, would have been great for us. You're going to be hard pushed to you know, to thinking you can beat teams like Sunderland, but we almost did it, and I think that gives us great confidence going into the next few games, uh, knowing that we've taken probably one of the best sides in, in the lower divisions to a, to a draw, both home and away. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fantastic occasion. Just a uh, shame we couldn't hold on for all three points. This is saying that the highs are sweeter because of the lows, and that was certainly a low because it, the, the whole team on and off the field really but definitely the team on the field on that day deserves that three points. We weren't partying believe me. <laughs> the way that the town um, has got behind the club in the last five years, the support we've got, um, this this spirit that we have of, uh, of being the underdog, of being this, uh, this team that came into the league a little bit late in football, you know, in, in the 90s when everyone else had their team, everyone else had chosen their teams and, and it was hard for, for them to battle through and, and create this, uh, this noise that Wickham Wanderers were a league club and over the years I think they've, uh, they've really proved that they, uh, they deserve to be in the Football League, they're here for a reason and we've gained supporters, um, lately we've gained a, a younger group of supporters, the next generation if you were coming along. When I joined I thought it was quite quite an old school of support but we really have uh, really have got people on and off the pitch fighting really hard for Wickham Wonders and, and being proud of them and knowing what it means to the people what it passionately means to the people makes me very proud and, uh, and that will uh, that goes a long way in making Wickham Wonders a, a real special club for me.